Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the new operator. I'm going to go on up to my website here to javacjava.com I'll click my little menu here and I'm going to go to Java OOP tutorials, the object oriented programming more geared towards those tutorials here. Um, the new operator tutorial is, is in the list here. It's also in the list on my main tutorials page there too as well. So we'll just go ahead and select that. So the new Java keyword and operator is essential to creating objects and calling a class constructor. There are basically three steps to create an object. You got your declaration step, and that's where you declare a reference variable of object data type. Okay? Then your instantiation um, step, where the new operator allocates the object in memory and returns a reference to that object. Okay? And then you got your initialization step, where the new operator then invokes the appropriate class constructor based on the argument list. Now basically the structure for creating an object is this. You've got your object type, your reference variable, assignment operator, and then your new operator, and then your constructor, and right after your constructor you have to have your argument list, right? Which can just be an empty argument list, which is, it has to be enclosed in parentheses, pair of parentheses, and then you've got your semicolon to terminate the statement, okay? So in this tutorial we'll discuss in detail all three steps to create an object. So let's just come down here first of all and let's highlight this code here. Hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Definitely don't want to see me type all this in. That'll take forever. Click on Start Search. We'll type in CMD to open up the command prompt. If you're running uh, Windows 7 or earlier you can go to Start Run type in CMD. Then I'm going to type in Java C and you should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by and get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit. I want to make sure that's installed and configured properly then before you continue with the tutorials. Okay, I'm going to do CLS to clear the screen. Then I'm going to do CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go to the root. <coughs> I'm going to do md make directory java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. Then we'll change directories to the java folder. I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call this uh, new operator. And we'll change directories to that. I want to type in notepad new operator.java, right? New operator.java is going to be our source code file name, also known as our compilation unit. Yep, we'll go ahead and hit Control V to paste that in, or right click and select paste, whatever your preference is. Okay, we'll save this out. So basically, we've got a simple little class here. We could have put this in its own acme.java source code file and compiled it, but just for, for purposes of the tutorial, save some time and make it easier, I just put it right here in this in the new operator source code file here. So the class acme is an empty class. Okay. The, uh, and up here, the class new operator, which has the main method entry point there, is where we're going to do everything. So let's talk about the first step, which was declare um, the declaration step. We're declaring a reference variable of a object data type. So our object data type is the Acme object is what we're creating here, right? Data type. And then our reference variable A. Now the first thing I'm going to do, just for, uh, this isn't necessary right here, but I'm going to assign it equal to null so we can go ahead and print that out and see what's going on there, right? Then the next thing we're going to do is just uh, display the string literal, which is a bunch of dashes just to separate it there. And then I'm going to say um, the reference variable equals new, and then the Acme, a new Acme object. And this is actually an Acme constructor, but we'll talk about that here in just, a, just shortly there. So. The new operator instantiates an Acme object in memory and returns a reference to the new object. Okay? The assignment operator assigns the returned reference to the reference variable. So this little section right here, new, new is actually going to return a reference. And then the assignment operator equals is going to assign that reference equal to A. 
Okay, and then we'll go ahead and print out A to the console there, the value of that. And A will basically print out the value of the reference that uh, the new object the, the new object returns. And just in order to prove that, what we'll do is we'll come down here and we'll print out another string literal of a bunch of lines. So we're going to loop five times showing what the new operator returns as a reference. So a simple little for statement, like uh, I'm going to run five times, and we're just going to display to the console calling the new operator and creating a new um, Acme object in memory, right? And the return, so display the return value of the new operator when it instantiates the an Acme object. Now I wanna just let you know, the output will differ with regards to the memory address, but all the references will begin with an Acme and then a, the you know, at there. So let's go ahead and save this so we can see the results here. We'll talk about this a little bit more. We'll just reiterate some of those things. CLS, Java C to compile that file. And Java to run to invoke the new operator class. Okay, so on the first line we get we get our null because we've set our reference variable equal to null, right? That's kind of like a good default value there. And in future tutorials, I'm, go, I'm building on something on this, so just so you know that. Okay. Now in the next little section here, we took the reference variable a, right, and assigned it the return of the reference to the new object, okay? And then we just print that out. So this is actually the return of the reference. The reference variable now holds this Acme object. And the Acme object will say Acme and then at, and then this is some sort of arbitrary memory address where the object is located, okay? Now, just to prove that the new operator doesn't even need any of the variables or anything like that, and that it actually does return a reference, we'll just simply display a reference by creating um, some new Acme objects, and they'll disappear right away too, by the way, since we're not actually doing anything. The only thing we're displaying is the reference that the new operator returns here when it creates an object, okay? So that's exactly what right here, we got five new objects created. Pretty much immediately destroyed too, but we'll talk about that. That's a whole new operator called finalize later, but um, that'll be pretty cool too as well. So. I love, love doing these tutorials on the object, object oriented stuff. It's a, it's a little bit more fun, you know, a little bit more, it, it just requires more brain power than doing some of the basic programming stuff like the, you know, the, the core stuff like the if statement, the for, and, you know, talking about, you know, binary literals and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, that's all good and all, but this is kind of where we're starting to get into more of the, you know, the intermediate stuff here, so. Let's go ahead and close out of it. Oh, I did not want to close out of it. Let's pop that back open. We're going to do one other thing here. <clears throat> Whoops, that's the bytecode. Okay, so let's come back to the tutorial here. I got a little sidetrack there talking about my, some stuff there. So. We got our output here. Now the last thing to demonstrate is the initialization step where the new operator then invokes the appropriate constructor based on the argument list. I will code a constructor to the Acme class that simply displays the string literal to the console. So let's overwrite the code in a notepad and save the file when we're done and we'll recompile and rerun. <coughs> okay, we'll just highlight all this, delete, control V, and this one is much more simple. So we've seen the the first two steps where we declare the variable and then we instantiate it. Now this one is the initializing step here. So um, doing it all in one statement here, right? Um, we're declaring a reference variable A of Acme object data type, and then we're assigning it the return when it creates a new Acme object, okay? Inside of the Acme class, we've got a constructor. Right, so the Acme constructor, the name has to be the same. If you start watching my constructor tutorial, you'll learn all about that. But so the Acme name here, right, and the constructor, which um, have to be the same. So this is the constructor right here. And inside of the constructor code block, it will just execute all the statements, which in this particular case is only one of them, which is the print line method that displays this string literal to the console, okay? Now it is no coincidence that the Acme 
and the parentheses with nothing inside of it matches this up here, right? Because the new operator <clears throat> only knows what kind of object to make based on the constructor that's in the class, okay? And I'll get into that a little bit more when I talk about constructors. I'm gonna drink a water here. Okay, so just a real quick iteration of that. <clears throat> object data type at me, reference variable A equals uh, the object that's returned, the object reference that's returned from the new operator creating a new ACME object. And then we're just going to display that to the console. Okay? Compile this, run it. So as it, um, as it created the new object, it executes the code block for the constructor, right? And that's why we got this printed out right here above this right here, the print line right here, where we're actually just displaying what the reference variable A is referring to, right? Which is the ACME at and then some sort of arbitrary memory address, okay? So that's, that's basically the way the new operator works. I'm just gonna close out of this, close out of this. I'm gonna pull my website back over. Just uh, wanna do a little final thing here. So three objects, De declaration, declare a reference variable of the object data type, instantiation, the new operator allocates the object memory and returns a reference to that object, and initialization. The new operator then invokes the appropriate constructor based on the argument list. Okay, um, come down here to the final thoughts. So understanding what the new operator does is the key to understanding how objects are created. In addition to this tutorial, my reference variables tutorial and my constructors tutorial will help solidify your understanding of creating objects. Get that out of the way there. Okay, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.